Okay, thank you everyone. Um, yeah, I work with the planning department in Fingal County Council as their community archaeologist. Um, just in case you don't know where Fingal is, it's North County Dublin or um, an odd corner of the county. Um, we have our sort of maritime coastal, can you all see that, yeah? yeah. Um, we have our maritime coastal area, we have our rural and we have our urban sort of urban fringe. Um, so the story so far, I am, I've been hanging around Fingal County Council for about 11 years now and I will not get them. <laughs> get rid of me um, but as a full-time sort of um, community archaeologist I suppose the whole thing kind of kicked off in 2015 with the Swords Castle digging history project which is ongoing for three years and um, then we did Braymore Castle dig and um, this year this, this summer passed um, digging Dramana out in Dramana Promontory Fort um, they're the main excavation projects I also try to augment it with um, other projects that gain interest for people who mightn't be into digging. So things like our geophysical survey project that we did with Earth Sound and John Nichols. Um, also the Fingal's Field Names projects where we're naming field names. Um, in terms of the sites that we choose to dig, um, memory is one of the things that about giving back memory to sites. The three major sites have either been closed for many years, um, they have ongoing works, or um, they just haven't been accessible to the people living around them. And they're also obviously in council ownership. Um, they've also had conservation plans done for them. We're not just leaping in there with excavation. They have a good um, a series of research objectives to achieve. Um, they also coincide with a place where there's works um, that are planned or that are ongoing and just in with sites that need um, local awareness to be raised. Um, the, the model is about partnership, it is about professional archaeologists working with community so we have our on-site team, um, a lot of you are here today and we also have our specialist team, our osteologists, all of that in place and we try and involve those on an ongoing basis with the public. Um, obviously, community archaeology is about involving people. Um, we were starting from a cold start, I suppose, um, and aside from ridiculous photos for press that we had to do, um, there was engagement with, say, the Fingal Heritage Network, which is a network of societies and heritage groups, the Fingal Heritage Forum, which is um, stakeholders in the community, business people, um, various environmental people that come together and in latter years the public participation network again to get the word out to as wide um, a group of people as possible um, for me it's all about engaging new audiences yeah heritage people will be interested they'll come along or whatever it's about reaching those people who don't know they're interested in heritage so um, the local press we've got a lot of feedback um, for how people hear about it and the local press has been very valuable and um, going to community open days community centres, turning up at those things, um, targeting sports clubs, schools, the tidy towns groups, um, the flavours of Fingal is at the local sort of spring show festival thing. So um, we have a stand at that, trying to, um, you know, just take people off the street basically. Um, social media, obviously we have the support of the Heritage Council, and we were very lucky in our first year that we had an um, engagement with RT News that kind of got the word out there on the street, literally. Um, I'm going to talk about the Swords Castle Digging History Project today. Um, basically, as I said, it's not just excavation, it's about using different strands so um, to achieve research topics, but also to engage people. So Swords Castle is... Um, well, it's not a castle, it's an archbishop's palace, and um, it's on the end of the high street in Swords, but it's also going a lot, undergoing a lot of enabling works, and it's going to be part of the new cultural quarter for Swords. So you have those two things going on. So we did, one of the strands was the story of the stone, both in terms of the works that have been carried out in the 1990s, but also having a geology day and, you know, where the stone was quarried. Um, to, I suppose, to go back to the start, 
um, and memory was to try and engage people with their memories of Swords Castle. So Swords Castle, my castle. Um, the idea was that people would bring their artworks, their photos, um, their memories, and it would be curated by a local artist, Andrew Carson. Um, unfortunately, most of their memories were climbing the walls to go drinking. Um, <laughs> but uh, it it's started things off. The other thing we did was Swords Archaeofest. Again, it was tying it in with the local Swords Festival as an element of that. It was very much kids orientated. The museum came out, we had stands, um, the SIA were there, you know, it's just to get give people in uh, the local resurrecting monuments community group, um, just to get people involved on different levels. Um, the length of the digs, um, they vary from two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and um, we learned the hard way that a month is too long. Um, it always coincided with um, the National Heritage Week um, in terms of that and working weekends as well, being open on weekends to give that level of accessibility to people who, you know, obviously working during the week and uh, rain or shine as well, we, there's no... Um, important element of it is training. I don't think there is a single person in Swords who can't read a Dunphy level at this point. Um, and allowing people to have a go at planning, say, I would say that the uptake on that end of things, the recording planning things, people aren't that, that interested in that. Or maybe it's a level of fear involved that it's too technical or something, but they'd much rather stick with something like the sieving. Again, it's about accessibility. Not everybody would physically be able to get into trenches um, and stuff, and there's a level of sociability involved. Um, so topsoil sieving, um, fines washing, bone washing, um, allows interaction with the materials that we're finding as well as with each other. Um, all the processing and registering is done on site, um, labelling, all of that crack, museum ready. Um, and actually, Quiva and Monica here volunteer in the, the Collections Resource Centre, which is still in swords for the minute. Um, we also involve people in the, like, what they're interested in, I suppose. Alexi here was in college in Trinity, and his interest was doing the soil sampling. Well, he mightn't have been that interested, but he was talented at it, so. Um, <coughs> so again, it's giving people an opportunity to try the different sides of the archaeological process. Um, they weren't just let off. We had um, Dr. Mariel McClatchy from the outset has done a, an environmental day every year. So she will come out and train um, us in soil sieving. Um, and it's had fantastic results. We have a massive assemblage from the site. Um, also things like, say, the uh, post-medieval pottery workshop at Rosanne Mean. Again, it's what we're finding on site. Lots of it's a disturbed site in terms of the 19th century lots of that material so then to find out what that actually means once we've extracted it from the ground and um, plus it means you know we've got all our pottery sorted um, there's an important element is to um, keep the momentum going after the dig um, and the National Museum of Ireland have been very helpful in that in organising day in the first year we had a conservation day out in the resource centre um, Again, showing what happens, you know, to the material that you've uncovered and the value of that. Um, and people love a tour or somewhere that they can't get into normally. Um, we have first finding seminars, um, usually in the spring. Um, our last one is in two weeks' time, if anybody wants to come along. Um, so again, it's keeping that engagement going. You know, this is what you contributed with your, which by volunteering on our site. This is the knowledge that we've gained and to share that. Um, I think art and archaeology has, it, it's quite an important way of disseminating information and interest. So we've always tried to incorporate that. Um, Memories was the first thing, again, that local artist, he did a film in terms of um, local people's memories. And then in the second year, there was a companion piece, participation. So that was interviewing everyone on site and how they felt about it. And we had a film showing in the in Swords Chapel. Um, 
a bigger project that was commissioned through the Arts Office of the Department, or the Arts Department of Fingal County Council, was our Old Bride is Made of Wood, um, where Anne Malie curated um, a couple of artists um, working with Mariel McClatchy and her results. So they used the seeds that had been found and processed by the people on site as inspiration for both um, an e a food caravan where they came back to site and using medieval recipes based on the results fed the, fed the volunteers. Um, also using um, tattoo, tattoos, um, nail tattoos for, um, of the seeds on, on nails, as a nail parlour and stuff. But it's also part of a wider thing where they're engaging with new communities in terms of, as artists in terms of their bread recipes that they're bringing from different countries. So it's going beyond what just what we're doing. So who does community archaeology in Spingal? Um, basically everyone. <laughs> um, the, I think we've had about over almost 450 people have participated thus far. Um, the age range we, is from 18 to 90. Um, most of those would be in the sort of middle age group, not that anyone would thank me for calling them middle aged. Um, also, in terms of this is based on the Swords Castle um, stuff, in terms of it, people in the me engaging people in the immediate locality, but it reflects the same for all of um, the projects. Um, I do try and make people f fill out feedback sheets so um, we have something to go on. So, there's a wider sort of Fingal County Dublin area, but we do have people who travel in terms of um, we have regulars who come from Galway and who come from Cork. And also, because I suppose Swords Castle is a tourist thing, um, people would turn up and then maybe come back again. So we've had participants from Switzerland, Germany, Canada, um, who've come back. Um, this is the sort of feedback, which is generally positive. I don't think anyone's... My favourite is I, I give my eyeballs to do it again. <laughs> You're kind of going to need them, but uh, it's that... <laughs> It, it kind of engenders a lot of, um, I suppose, passion about their, my trench, my find, my site, my locality, my monuments. Um, so just to break down the Fingal model for community archaeology, as I said, it's all about partnership and research. I think people can be a little bit, ooh, community archaeology, you know, but you have to remember it's research excavation with community participation. Um, so we've had a lot of brilliant results, which will be coming to a bookshop soon or a um, website. So um, in terms of just filling in those knowledge gaps identified in the conservation plans. Um, also in terms of what I call bringing experience, expertise, um, people bring their own talents, you know, that are helpful to an excavation. So it's not like we're just doing people a favour by letting them dig. It's like people bring stuff as well to that experience. Um, whether like um, Seamus here is, uh, was a surveyor, you know, that's, that's handy. Um, <laughs> um, or people who might be really good at craft work, well, they've been label and pottery now for several years. Or, you know, it's just that idea that also people take what they want from it. So we have as I said, people who volunteer in the National Museum, but we've also had people who have based, or like artists that have participated, who've, who've gone off and, you know, based works around it. Or we have people who bring, um, who do Irish language tours, just because they can. Um, another important element is education. And um, we encourage site visits from schools. Um, obviously archaeology is on the curriculum both primary and secondary so I do a lot of school visits and pop-up museums in schools and um, there's a lot of teacher interest in that um, we get a lot of teachers volunteering so there's that kind of level of interaction as well um, I think one of the most important elements is new communities um, Fingal has the largest or the fastest growing youth population and also a large new um, elements of new community, ma mainly from Eastern Europe. So it's that we've had a lot of participants, all family groups, 
who've um, taken part that I suppose are now becoming um, oh, more engaged in the wider community in a way that maybe they wouldn't have had happened before. And we are also building connections with other institutions and other um, people who have participated, the National Learning Network, the Polinia Training Programme, Prosper Pingal, the local community groups, Tourism Ireland, Discovery Programme have been very helpful, um, and <coughs> Conservation Volunteers Ireland as well. Um, I suppose the value of it is it's the e least easy to quantify, I think for, for me the most valuable is the sort of community engendered from the projects. We now have a kind of thriving community archaeology community that sort of intergenerational, um, some have returned to learning, some just come for days, some come for weeks, some come every year, but that are interested and engaged and going out there and making that a positive experience among the wider community. Um, yeah, so um, I suppose despite me trying to make them pose like they're on a U2 album cover, um, they're very patient with me. Um, part of it, I suppose, is we're looking at um, uh, Fingal Community Archaeology Strategy. And again, what I would say, it's not, while I'm there to support groups starting up by themselves, to date, people have been happy with the service that we've provided as a council in terms of allowing people to engage with archaeology. But I do hope that will, in turn, sort of inspire people to set up their own groups. But, um, and not to preempt the next speaker, I would say, yeah, archaeology does make you happy. Thank you. <laughs>